Hi, it's Rachel from 7 and All, and today we're going to be talking about organizing toys. Toys, the great dilemma for all parents. We want our kids to have toys. We ourselves sometimes even buy our kids toys. They spend a lot of time. We see our kids enjoying their time building towers, playing imaginative play with their toy kitchens. We enjoy toys ourselves, maybe, but we can get really frustrated when it feels like our house is just becoming a mess full of toys. One tool in our tool belt is to have a toy organization system so that we and our kids don't become overwhelmed by toys. So I'm going to be organizing my own family's toys today because um, at the time I'm filming this, it is right after Christmas and it's time for a bit of a reassessment, reorganization so that we can start our year fresh. We've got new toys to have fun with and I wanna make sure that we have a system in place so that we can enjoy our toys and not feel overwhelmed. I'm also gonna be sharing some helpful tips for you guys as you seek to have an organized toy system in your own home. My very first tip is that when you begin to organize toys, begin with the end in mind. Begin with your end goal in mind. And for me, and what I think should be the goal pretty much for all families, is to have a toy organization system that your kids can implement themselves on a daily basis. Now what do I mean by that? That you want to have a system that your kids can implement on their own. What I mean is that cleaning up toys and organizing toys, putting toys away where they go on a daily basis is not a job that needs to be mama's job. Mama has a lot of jobs to do every day. Cooking, cleaning the bathrooms, all that sort of thing. You don't need to be the one who's putting toys in their correct spot every single day. So have a system that your kids can use on their own. And if your oldest child is one, that's gonna be a little bit harder. But kids at a very young age can be understanding a system. You can set your kids up for success to be able to organize their own toys by having a system that's easy to, for them to use. My oldest child is still a toddler and he can put his own toys away. Now something that's really gonna help your kids to be able to take charge of their own toy organization and keeping their toys in line is to make sure that they know that every toy goes with its own set. Kind of the holy grail of toy organizations is all the pieces in a set. And what will help a lot with that is having a container for each set. Now, if you wanna be all trendy and Instagrammy, you would have basically all your toy containers look the same and then you label them. But I actually think it's easier with young kids when your containers don't all look the same and you don't really have to worry about labeling because they look different. This container is for one kind of toy and this container is for a different kind of toy. It's easier for kids to remember because there's a really distinct visual cue. They might not all match, but they serve the purpose very well. Now, I, for me, I wouldn't worry about all my containers, you know, really matching and being color coordinated. Just to me, that's not a big um, passion or interest, but I would be a little bit picky with containers for more practical purposes. The big thing that's gonna help you be successful with toy containers is having the right size. This has traditionally been our Duplo container. However, Duplos have turned out to be a big passion with my son and he got some new ones for Christmas. And the Duplos can fit in this container, but they don't really quite fit anymore. Actually, they fit in just such a way that someone like me more has to put them in and if I can get them all really organized just right, then I can put the lid on this container and they fit. But I don't wanna be the one picking up the Duplos every day and making sure they fit. So what I did was I got a bigger container. The Duplos are graduating to this container and this container is gonna be just about the right size for our Hot Wheels toys. Couple more container options. I actually love using like shoe boxes, cardboard boxes for um, storage for different types of things. I've used these many times for different different reasons. Shoe boxes are great. However, if you want containers that very young kids, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds are going to be using on a daily basis, I do not recommend cardboard. They just get crushed. This is what kids love cardboard boxes. You can give your kids cardboard boxes all you want, 
but don't give them to them for the purpose of here. I want you to use this same storage container for months to hold these certain toys. And if your kid is going to have access to the container, make sure that it is more of a plastic one or not so easily destroyed as cardboard. Also, you can think outside the box. Not all toys necessarily need to go in boxes, cartons, baskets. Um, bags of some sort make a good container for some types of toys. I like this for very light toys that have a lot of um, pieces or parts. So I have several of these. These are just laundry bags. You can use like reusable grocery shopping bags could be a good option as well. I would not recommend like plastic Ziploc bags with kids because we you know we don't want um, kids to be having unfettered access to plastic bags to play with. Um, but this is great. They're breathable, just mesh laundry bags with zippers. I'll show you how I'll be using these in a minute. So take a few minutes and think about what kind of containers would be the best for different types of toys in your home. And be willing to invest in the right sizes because having containers that are too big is going to waste your space. Having containers that are too small and the toy can just barely fit, well, you're going to end up putting away the toys yourself then. One big tip I have for you is to use what you have. Make the most use of what you have and that might take some thought. So this is my son's bed in his room. We're going to have one room for both boys to share. Now I think Montessori kind of toy shelves look great. Those are cool options, but I don't want another piece of furniture for holding toys in this room. And this bed just happens to come with drawer storage underneath. We didn't actually buy this bed. This was a hand-me-down to us years ago before we even had kids. But I want to make the most of what is here, what's underneath the bed, so we're not taking up more room in their bedroom for a whole nother piece of furniture to store toys. This is what I have to work with. It might not be the most trendy, but I'm gonna make it work. However, these drawers are huge, and this is not really gonna be helpful. This is going into the kind of old-fashioned, I don't know if any of you guys had those huge toy boxes when you were a kid, where all the toys are just dumped in together. This is kind of a post-Christmas problem. This was actually largely me. I just dumped everything in together. But we're going to get in here, separate things into their own bags, cartons, and boxes, and it's going to work way better. So here's the before. Another thing to consider when it comes to containers, sometimes toys come in their own containers from the toy store, so you're tempted to just kind of use those containers. And sometimes that's a good idea. This, well, it's upside down right now. Um, but this is a container of blocks that we got for my son's first birthday, my oldest son's first birthday. It's cardboard, but it has this kind of cool shapes lid. This has held up very well over a couple of years. So that's been a good one to just keep using, keep all the blocks inside that one. This container came with some animals in it maybe about a year ago. We should not have held on to this this long because I have had so much frustration this is just cheap plastic here. Trying to get the lid to go on is not fun. It doesn't really stay on. It is always bending. It's hard to get it into just the right slot. This is not actually a container worth saving. Poor choice on my part. If you have containers like this that toys came in and they kind of they have a handful, they're luring you into saving them. Don't get lured in like I did and don't save them. Here are the after results. I've got all the Hot Wheels and other automobile toys in there. Doctor set, stacking rings, backpack. We've transferred the Duplos into the bigger basket. We have a couple kind of puzzle or hammering sets here. That's a different set of blocks. Tractor. Here we have our little musical instrument collection and I've got the Mr. Potato Head family in a bag and different little animal figurines in a bag. So this is the toy organization for their room. 
And then especially for younger kids, you want to be thinking about what toys do you want to have very accessible to your kids stored in their own room and which toys do you want to have maybe in a different location and not accessible at all times. A lot of families practice toy rotation and we do a slight bit of that. Although you can tell I do let them keep quite a few toys in their room. Um, this is more than usual because we just got a whole bunch of new toys for Christmas. Um, but there are a few toy sets that I don't allow them to keep in their room but I do get out um, during the day and I'll get out one set that we can play with at a certain time. Now for me, a big reason why I won't keep a certain set of toys in my kids room but will keep it kind of set apart is safety. And that's going to be really kind of probably your main factor at play when you have toddler age kids. Um, so let me show you some of the things that I don't let them keep in their room and you can think about for your age of kids, what would be the most appropriate toys to keep in the room and which would you more like to keep in storage on an everyday basis. So here are a few of the sets that I do not um, allow to be kept in the room. Here's a really fun fishing game. I loved these when I was a kid. My boys are a little bit young for it, but my older son really enjoys this and asks to get it out. And when he asks to get it out or when I decide to get it out, we do, but I don't leave it out because I have a one-year-old and he will put this dice right in his mouth and chew on it. Also the sticks and the strings are just not really young toddler safe. So I want this only out when I am directly supervising. Then um, art supplies, I also, I keep these just where I can get at them. They are not free and open use. I know a lot of people advocate for, you know having art supplies open and able to be used for your kids i'm pretty sure either they don't mean for preschool age kids or they must not have the kind of kids who are tempted to color on the walls and cut up everything inside but i would not trust my two-year-old or one-year-old with crayons scissors glue play-doh so all of this stuff we love to do art supplies we do a lot of it at home but it's when mama gets it out and also puzzles, any kind of wooden puzzle piece, or not wooden, cardboard puzzle piece. We don't have this out for just the kids to get out because then you're going to have the frustration of missing puzzle pieces or really in the case of my one-year-old, you would have eaten puzzle pieces and chewed on puzzle pieces. <laughs> Too much temptation right here. So you can think about what are the toys that you would want to keep separate and I have my, my husband and I keep one of our bedrooms as kind of an office workroom type of thing and I keep all of our preschool supplies, art supplies, and kind of game stuff on a bookshelf in that room. And my boys know they need to ask um, if they're interested in using one of these items. Now if you've watched my channel before you'll know that I tend to do my housework right alongside my toddler. I tend to take him along with me when I'm organizing as well. Now today doing a little bit of reorganizing I didn't have him with me because he went out on a special outing with my husband, his dad. Little father-son um, day out. Um, but to set him up for success, to set my son up for success, when he comes back and sees his room reorganized, I'll do a little bit of training with him. I'll point out where each new toy goes, especially because the Duplo is in a new box now. And I'll even run some drills, you know, hand him a toy and say, okay, put this away in the right place and get him more comfortable with where it is. That's a great way, especially with young kids who might not pick up on the differences right away, to draw their attention to it, run some drills so that they know what's expected. Because you wanna set your kid up for success when it comes to putting away their toys every day, not have them feeling overwhelmed, and then you get into the cycle of whining and complaining and frustration on your part. So I hope these tips were helpful as you think about toy organization in your own home. Um, you can subscribe to this channel, 7 and all, and you can like this video if you appreciated the content. Bye!